welcome to you talking to me. Today the European Parliament voted against the renewal of the anti-smuggling agreement with the tobacco industry, Philip Morris International. This is a 12 years period agreement which is expected to expire in July and it is against the illicit trade of tobacco. We are going to discuss this with two members of the European Parliament. Mr. Bart Stas, you are a Belgian Green member. Indeed. Hello, and Mrs. Grassle, you are a German member of the European People's Party, the centre-right group. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hello and welcome both of you. Thank so you. today the agreement, so the Parliament voted against the renewal of this agreement, which is expected to expire in July. So this is a good thing according to you, Mrs. Grassle? In my opinion it's an error because for three years we will not have the, pro uh, the, the procedures of, uh, we foresaw in the agreement, which means track and trace and know your customer due diligence on who buys the products. And this is with the most smuggled cigarette in the world, um, Marlboro. This is, in my view, a big error. So when you say so three years, we have to, to remind uh, our public that so there is a tobacco directive which is going to come in 2019, then followed by the World uh, Health Organization's protocol in 2022. So this is Mr. Starr, so your group voted, I mean, against this renewal also. And so do you think so in three years period, so we will not have anything then? So, when we have to remind that it's a non-binding resolution, that's, that's not going to be... It is a non-binding resolution. It is up now to the Commission to decide and uh, we will see if they follow the advice of Parliament, yes or no. But uh, what Mrs. Gresser says is, I think, uh, not, not, not really true. Um, the context is that we have indeed uh, four tobacco agreements, apart from Philip Morris, also with three other tobacco giants. Since 2004. Uh, 2004, and then and later on there were other ones. And I cannot imagine that Philip Morris will uh, now stop tracking and tracing uh, its, uh, its cigarettes, because the three others do it. It would be of a big reputational uh, damage of Philip Morris not to do so anymore. The more, and that is the real reason why we voted against a renewal, we have, uh, the, the context has changed since 2004. We have now the tobacco directive. It were the amendments of Mrs. Gressler and myself that have been adopted and put into the tobacco directive on tracking and tracing, mm -hmm. on the fight against uh, smuggling. And there is the context also of uh, the convention and the protocol of the uh, World Health Organization, which, uh, and there I think we agree, we want that text to be ratified. And it would be a very negative sign to third countries outside the European Union to have another bilateral agreement between the European Union and Philip Morris then those uh, countries would say, why then do we have to ratify the convention? So that was the main re reason to say, uh, no, we don't want it to be renewed. And the three years of the gap is, uh, I think, not a real problem because Philip Morris will uh, continue track and trace its products. Mm. So, so Mrs. Glass, uh, yes. They count on on the voluntary action by tobacco, by the tobacco industry. You know, we do not trust them. That's why we wanted to have an obligation for them to do so. Hopefully they do it, but we did not want to be at, the, at their mercy. Yeah, but, but let's, let, let's, let's not exaggerate the problem. Uh, we all know that the, the real problem of tobacco smuggling is now not with, uh, with uh, the four uh, tobacco giants, it is with the so-called cheap whites, mm. the import. And so for that, so I want to come back, so I will yeah. So the cheap whites, so we have to 85% of the so market. Cheap whites, we have to make uh, it understood by our public. So cheap whites, it's, ma it's made by cigarettes, non-branded cigarettes, so who are not uh, produced in the European Union, but who enters in the European Union. So, um, according to the Commission, so from out of 600 million of, uh, of cheap white cig of, uh, cigarettes entering in the Union in 2015, there were almost of them cheap whites, so non-branded cigarettes. Yes. So this is Ms. Grasser, okay, so this is I mean, dealing with tobacco industries. It's a bit useless now if we cannot even fight against this you know, we have a lot of loopholes still on the sector. That's why I recommend to close down loopholes. And the one with the agreement, it closes down a loophole, which stays open now. And hopefully it will not stay open. We don't know what happens. The cheap white problematic means that we need to control the original products. or Every producer needs to produce cigarettes, which means uh, raw, raw uh, cut tobacco, 
Uh, here we have uh, five producers worldwide and it's much easier to control them. We have two within the European Union, that's why in the resolutions we call on the Commission to make a due diligence and as well track and trace as well for those products. The cigarette filters, here we have 25 producers worldwide and the acetate tau and the filters, here we have around about uh, 15 to 20 producers worldwide. It should be easy to control all of them to cover up cheap whites as well. Mm. So, Mr. Stas, so you were on the, co the EU Commission or the Budget Commission, or Mrs. Uh, Georgieva, last week that tobacco industry is not a friend. So, you still arguing this is the case today? No, this is the wrong framing. Um, the real framing is that uh, we had an agreement with Philip Morris, and, which expires in July 2016. Okay, we will have a gap uh, with the new uh, legislation of the Tobacco Directive and hopefully the conventions of the W. Uh, HO, um, but uh, I don't trust Philip Morris as such, but I cannot imagine that uh, they will risk to have such a reputational damage uh, of their, their, their brands, uh, seeing that the three other giants are doing what they have to do under the conditions of the agreements that we concluded with them after 2004, and I don't see how they will risk to stop also after that they invested so much in the tracking uh, and tracing system uh, that they uh, put in place since 2004, I don't see why they wouldn't continue, continue doing this. So the cheap whites is the priority now? Indeed. And, and, and the cheap whites are not covered by this agreement nor by the agreement. But will be others. covered? So you're asking the Commission, do you think the Commission will then at this, this cheap whites. But the cheap and whites are not covered neither by the directive and which True. enters into force 2019 and the FCTC protocol covers it neither. This means that uh, we need measures, uh, stable measures to really do uh, to cover up this loophole. And this is the clear message of the resolution that we voted today in Parliament and I think that the PPE supported that amendment. The amendment saying clearly that we asked the Commission to start uh, the, the real battle, the real struggle against the cheap whites and to put in place all measures and Mrs. Gressler has enumerated them and, and which actors have to be, uh, to be uh, controlled to be sure that 85% of the market is controlled and that we can win the fight against, against uh, smuggling and that we can win the, win the fight to have uh, much more income for the member states mm. and, um, and uh, the European Union. So until then that so three years so but, but you remain so why so on, in three years so what we will have then in three years if this renewal is not accepted I mean well the the tobacco directive as such has to be transposed in national law by I think the end of May this year um, what the Commission will have to do is uh, on the the chapter let's say on, on on cigarette smuggling and on tracking and tracing they will have to to start and they did already partly so by a tender and and uh, they have will have to put in place a system of traf uh, on, on tracking and tracing that is independent because the system and we we uh, I think we, we together in the budget control committee we criticized the the, the way in which the actual track traf tracking and tracing systems exist they are not independent so we need a really independent system that is reliable that is controllable and that uh, that uh, that Parliament and Commission and member states agree upon and that was your yes. issue as yes. well yes. Ms. You know, Mrs. The, Gressler, problem, so. the problem is that there are still important technical points open for the, for the transposition of the tobacco directive the track and trace system now we have it on a level of master cases which means yes. 10,000 pieces and we have it only for the first purchaser under the agreements, but now with the track and trace system under the directive, we will have it on pack level. Imagine that every single tobacco pack has to be scanned or has to be um, have, not, have to have not, a code. Yes, need, needs to have a code to be identifiable. This is an important technical um, uh, challenge. Which will take years and years and which will I, yeah, be no, difficult. For the moment, years and years are not foreseen, just foreseen till uh, 2019. But there are still important things to do. And of course as well, um, the due diligence, know your customer. And this means, the question is how many 
entry and exit points you will have for this single pack Absolutely. Mm. or for the, for the master case. Okay, so we will follow up uh, the discussion with uh, a partner who has a question for you. So it's related to, we, we are talking about anti-smuggling, but it's related to health because of course tobacco is a health issue as well because more than 700,000 premature deaths every year. Uh, because of tobacco in the European Union. So um, the Health Commissioner also already said that he saw no reason to extend the deal with Philip Morris that produced a killing product. So related to this, we have um, a question from Lydia. She is from Slovenia, from uh, RTV Slo, the Slovenian Public Broadcasting, and she is a member of Johannet Plus. Let's listen. We all know that from a health point of view, there may be many questions on working with companies whose main products cause almost 700,000 Europeans to die prematurely. Let us also not forget that even Health Commissioner Andrew Yukaidis said last year that he had doubts about the need to extend the PMI deal. What health benefits could we expect from the possible extension? Thank you. So, Mrs. Grassler, how does any PMI deal, any tobacco companies deal with the European Union? Who can that benefit the citizen? The, the point of the agreement is not to benefit for health, it is to fight smuggling and to fight the illicit trade. This means that we fight, we fight against smoking and I'm a fierce fight against smoke. Smoking, you know, we fight with the tobacco productive directive with other measures. And uh, this means that we should not mix up everything. You know, we have a problem to solve, which is the illicit trade. And this is as well a health issue, mm -hmm. because there we have uh, other products which damage the health, if, uh, which damage health, uh, health as well. That's why don't expect anything for the health from this agreement. This is not the point. The point is how to control tobacco products on the market. Yeah, but this, this will be linked with the consumption if less cigarettes enter into the European Union. Well, one of our arguments to not uh, go further with this agreement was exactly the fact that we have now or that we are working on uh, a convention and a protocol that is issued by the World Health Organization. And that says in your contacts with the tobacco industry, you have to follow certain rules and so on and so on. And I think a big majority in the parliament does want that convention and that protocol to be ratified in 2022 in it will earlier, come into force earlier but in, into so force. that it can come into force in 22 23 but uh, our fear was in prolonging this kind of agreements that this would have a negative effect effect on all those who still have to ratify it only 5 out of the 28 member states have until now ratified the text in the plenary session of may we will discuss uh, this uh, this uh, who convention and we have to, to really put all our efforts in uh, the ratification of those texts and those will have an impact a positive impact on health. Mm. So other things also that uh, it's considering, I mean, it's linked with the tobacco directive, the European uh, Parliament worked a lot also in the area of uh, smoking prevention and the European Commission also, such as cigarette packaging or a ban of flavored cigarettes. So we have a question, another question from a Polish partner. Uh, Joachim has a question for you related to this issue. Hello. The European Commission has a history of work in the area of smoking prevention. How does all this refer to the Philip Morris deal? Won't the PMI deal dash all the anti-tobacco efforts? So we're talking, it's because on the media, PMA deal, Philip Morris deal, a deal of anti-smuggling. Is not, this is not a way, I mean, it's hindering all the other measures no not at all you know this is exactly the problem that we do you know it was very hard to explain that this agreement prolonging or not it is it has not even a symbolic um, signification the only point is do we want to cover up the loophole we have on control of tobacco products for the com upcoming three years do we want that or not and there are the ones who say you cannot do business at all with them the others say, uh, do it because we need to, uh, to, to solve our problem. We have to solve the problem of the next three years. And for the moment, we can't solve it because Parliament is not willing uh, to make a step forward. Bart says we do not need it because um, we will survive this uh, three years and they will do it anyway. I'm not so confident that they will do it in a way or we want them to be uh, the, the work to be done. We need to know uh, which 
uh, which containers have been stolen, what's going on on the, on the world market with their products. And for the moment this was the sake of the agreement that uh, Philip Morris told the European Union what went on. And there was also a kind of cooperation for, uh, to, to fight smuggling pro with, um, with, with original cigarettes. This is now a game over. And there's a co the question is, what will happen now? I don't know what will happen now, we'll see. Okay, we will see. So last question and last one, Mr. Stas. So how we will survive uh, in three years' time? Oh, I think uh, the, 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 the most important thing is to work together in the Parliament to support uh, the Health Commissioner and the ratification of, uh, of the WHO uh, uh, protocol and, and the Convention. And I think we have to be uh, very clear to uh, Philippe Morris that we will not accept that uh, they, uh, they cheat us. Okay, that will be the last words. Uh, thank you for coming, uh, both of you, and thank you for watching. Best. See you.